I'm Veronica with Watchmojo.com, and today we're speaking with Dr. Howard Steiger to better understand anorexia nervosa and to clear up some common misconceptions. What is an eating disorder? We're talking something that's structured around a constant preoccupation with eating, weight, body image, and as a result usually involves problem behaviors around eating, too much dieting, starving oneself, uh, or feeling the need to compensate for everything that's eaten so people wind up purging food through vomiting, through abuse of laxatives, through too much exercise. The best known ones are anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa. Uh, they're kind of close cousins. They both share this kind of idea of a real fear of losing control over weight gain, the constant obsession with weight and a desire to lose it. Um, in anorexia, it's literally like a phobia of weight gain. So people feel a terror of uh, eating anything that's unfamiliar or new or where they don't, the ingredients aren't known or eating in a place where they're not going to be able to compensate in some way by exercising or by purging in some cases and so on. This is often thought of as the rich girl's disease. Is that true? No, that's really one of the myths about uh, anorexia. In fact, that's got two of the myths in, in it because uh, anorexia nervosa doesn't it doesn't only happen in young women or in young or in teenage girls. In fact, the peak prevalence, the largest number of people affected by anorexia is more in an adult age group. You see it around the age of 28. And it's certainly not a, a disorder of affluence. There's a slight, you know, some of the pressures that may have contributed to anorexia uh, may be rooted in kind of upper middle class culture, you know, uh, achievement orientation, always trying to look good kind of stuff. But that's not um, the only factor that causes anorexia. And really, Anorexia nervosa cuts across all social classes. We used to think it only happened in kind of industrialized societies that have that thinness value. And in fact, uh, um, most of the evidence we have suggests that anorexia nervosa happens just about on every surface of the planet. It happens all over the world. It has happened throughout history. And it certainly happens at uh, times and places that really in which no social pressure towards thinness exists. A culture that's crazy about thinness and dieting like ours is, of course, helps. You know, and so you'll see more cases occurring. How will this affect their overall health? Well, I mean, you can't starve yourself without affecting every system in your body. Um, I mean, it's unfortunate anorexia nervosa has the highest mortality rate of any mental health problem. Aside from such dramatic things, it, it really has important consequences for um, fertility in women, bone density problems. You know, people who are malnourished wind up having uh, decalcification, the loss of calcium through the bones so that they, their bones become brittle, they're prone to uh, stress fractures and other kinds of things like that. Especially in those who purge, you have all kinds of effects on uh, digestive tract, the esophagus has all kinds, you can get various kinds of ulcerations and things like that, which can sometimes be quite dangerous. It does damage to dental health, it, it, the teeth gradually get eroded due to exposure to acid. It affects all organ systems. When you test somebody on standard medical tests, you find abnormalities of liver function, kidney function, cardiac function, digestive function. So, I mean, we're talking about a disorder that really messes you up psychologically and uh, medically. Now, if you've recovered from anorexia, can you easily fall back into your old habits? There's no real rule there because uh, eating disorders come in all severities, all kinds of shapes and sizes, and all kinds of durations. You know, so for some people, it's a relatively transient thing that kind of comes and goes during a period of life stress. For other people, it becomes a really anchored lifestyle that's really, really difficult to overcome. Uh, so some people retain a kind of uh, fragility. That means, that, you know, it's often the case that you have to be careful, like a former drug addict, you don't go back to the heroin. Uh, people who have anorexia nervosa have to be very careful, you don't go back to dieting. Um, dieting for some people is a dangerous behavior. And we know that there's a sort of, there are biological factors involved that mean that for some people dieting does very powerful things to brain chemistry and other things that locks them into the disorder. People say things like, once you're an anorexic, you're always an anorexic, and that's certainly not the case. Uh, people overcome anorexia nervosa every day. Thank you very much. It was great having you. You're welcome.